Magandang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to the second episode of the Golden Grass Talk. I am Ria Fernandez, your host for today. But before anything else, gusto po namin pasalamatan ng bawat isa sa patuloy ninyong suporta sa mga aktibidad ng Forest Management Bureau at gayon nga sa selebrasyon ng The World Bamboo Day. Ang tema po sa taong ito ay pamanang kawayan, lunti ang ginto ng kagubatan. Recap muna tayo dahil nabanggit nga natin na this is another episode of the Golden Grass Talk. Actually, we are on the second episode and last week, we just had our pilot run kung saan napagalaman natin ang estado ng mga kawayan sa bansa. Napag-usapan din doon yung economic and cultural values ng mga kawayan. Pati na rin yung papel nito sa climate change mitigation. At sa episode na ito, mas marami pa tayong matutunghayan at matututunan dahil nag-imbita tayo ng mga talagang eksperto sa larangang ito. Partikular, yung gamit ng mga kawayan sa pag-rehabilitate ng mind-out areas maging sa pag-develop ng community-based enterprises. So, bago tayo formal na magsimula, ay magkakaroon muna tayo ng ilang mga paalala tungkol sa house rules. If you will notice, we have a Zoom viewing and only limited number of participants are accommodated via Zoom. Pero wag po kayong magalala dahil maaari pa rin kayong makapag-participate sa amin. Paano? Sa pamamagitan po ng live streaming ng Forest Management Bureau. At bilang nasa Facebook page na kayo ng FMB, wag nyo na rin pong kalimutang mag-like. Welcome na welcome din po kayong mag-post ng inyong mga kuro-kuro sa gestyon at maging ng inyong mga tanong. Dahil maya-maya pagkatapos ng mga presentasyon ng ating mga resource person, ay pipili po ang ating FMB team ng mga tanong. Yung mga questions naman po na hindi mapipili, wag po kayong magalala dahil sasagutin pa rin yan ang ating FMB sa pamamagitan ng kanilang Facebook at maging ng email. So sa ngayon ay imimute muna natin ang lahat ng mga participants dito sa Zoom at to formally open this program and to start this momentous event, we are very privileged to have with us today the DNR Assistant Secretary for Policy, Planning, and Foreign Assisted and Special Projects to give us his opening message. Let us all welcome Assistant Secretary Marshall Amaro Jr. Thank you, Ria. A blessed day to everyone who is with us today in this webinar via Zoom and Facebook Live. We are celebrating Philippine Bamboo Month this month of September. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources through the Forest Management Bureau has lined up activities to promote and raise awareness on the importance of bamboo in our daily lives and our country, and to underscore the trust of Secretary Roy A. Simatu to use bamboo in the rehabilitation of denuded and degraded forest lands and the development of sustainable bamboo plantations. On September 18, 2020, just last Friday, we joined the global celebrations of World Bamboo Day. Simultaneous bamboo planting in 99 sites nationwide was conducted through our DNR field offices to commemorate this special day. We were joined by representatives from other government agencies, local government units, and partner people's organizations. The World Bamboo Day was established in 2009 during the eighth World Bamboo Congress, which was held in Bangkok, Thailand, to highlight the role of bamboo in achieving a sustainable future for all. Bamboo, especially in the Philippine context, can help augment our wood supply since it can be used as construction materials to make furniture and paper and as a source of energy among many others. Philippine bamboo can grow very tall quickly, which makes it suitable as a durable source of raw materials for high value products. We will have today the second episode of our Wednesday webinar series entitled The Golden Grass Talk, hosted by FMB. We have invited distinguished individuals to enlighten us on the key roles that bamboo plays in sustainable development. Dr. Armando Palihon, a retired professor of the College of Forestry and Natural Resources, UP at Los Baños, will talk about rehabilitating mined out areas using bamboo. He will demonstrate why bamboo is an excellent choice in transforming lands previously subjected to mining activities into a stable and safe condition. 
Mr. Mark Sultan Hersaba, the Chief Executive Officer of Bamboo High, will share knowledge about community-based bamboo industries. He will usher us into a world where bamboo creates economic opportunities for small farmers and our communities and for the country as a whole. We are privileged to have them with us in this webinar. We therefore expect an interesting and enriching interaction among our diverse participants with today's topics and resource speakers. We hope that with this webinar series on the Golden Grass Talk, and the other activities for the celebration of Philippine Bamboo Month, we are able to amplify your awareness on bamboo and hopefully engage everybody in the realization of its vast potentials for sustainable resource development and national development. Maraming salamat po and bambuhay. Maraming maraming salamat po, Asik Mars, and nice to see you again. Hindi na po natin patatagalin pa ang araw na ito dahil sabi nga natin, nag tayo ng mga eksperto talaga sa industriya ng kawayan. Now, we are very privileged to have with us today a professor at the College of Forestry, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, to discuss with us the role of bamboo in rehabilitating mined out area. Sama-sama po nating salubungin si Dr. Armando Palihon. Dr. Palihon, bambuhay po. Ayaw. Yes. Yes, um, sir. You may now proceed, sir. Saan Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to uh, present to you my paper on uh, bamboo for rehabilitation of uh, mine out area. Um, I would like to first uh, start my talk on the use of bamboo for rehab of mine out areas. Uh, as per PD463, uh, Mineral Resources Development Degree in IRRR of RA7942, Section 169, and now mining companies are required to rehabilitate, revegetate, mine out, and mine tailings. Expanded National Greening Program, focusing on undegraded lands, included bamboo in its commodity roadmap. 20% of mine out areas has to be revegetated with bamboo as per directive by the mines and geo bureau. The objectives of rehab using bamboo is, of course, to, uh, the main objective is revegetation of mine out area for the improvement of ecological functions of the landscape of the mining areas. And secondarily, as future source of materials for bamboo enterprise that can provide livelihood opportunities for the community and revenue for the, for the use. Remember that mining is not forever in the site. Thus, before it holds its operation, Test to ensure that landscape is revegetated with economically important plant species to be source of materials for the livelihood of the community. Hey, bamboo. Uh, there are quite a lot of ecological functions which actually have been uh, presented already by our, by our opening uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, um, uh, Brad Marsamaro. And I would like to reiterate that bamboo as, is a soil stabilizer can hold and soil, hold soil particles together to bamboo's regenerative ability. Develops rhizomes with intertwining and closely woven mat of fibrous roots. Therefore, it can minimize surface runoff and erosion. It protects hill, hillsides, roadsides, and river banks, to prevent landslides. That's why you see them frequently on these areas. Bamboo as a soil in, in, in nature and nutrient recycler. Rhizome system stores and transport nutrients. Rapid growth of regenerative capacity of bamboo allows it to take up large amount of nutrients. Heavy accumulation of um, serves as natural a source of organic matter, which are upon by micro and microorganisms. And this decomposed organic matter called humus improves the soil, enriches and recycles nutrients, including uh, silica into the soil. Bamboo as a water conserver. Canopy and the very high liter pole accumulation on the ground serve as cover and mulch, 
effectively to prevent soil from insulation, thus lessening evaporation. Humus, the product of decomposition tubes, soil structure which enhances infiltration, absor absorption, and water retention. Bamboo has been known as a phytoremediator. Uh, there is a study conducted by Pistangan uh, um, um, Felix Mining that bam Bayog, Kawayan Tinik, and bam Binget Bamboo were found to be potential in absorbing accumulating heavy metals. Among them, Bayog was uh, found to be efficient as phytoremediator for lead. Uh, bamboo species have been found to be have a higher capacity for uptake of heavy metals than trees. Again, this is due to high regenerative capacity of bamboo. Caution. You cannot uh, uh, eat the bamboo shoot, particularly in, if this uh, bamboo is planted in heb uh, heavy laden, heavy metal laden areas because the palatability is lost. Sorry. Uh, bamboo in carbon sequestration has a role in climate change uh, mitigation. Bamboo sequesters more carbon and, uh, than trees. This is because of the very efficient photosynthetic activity resulting to excellent regenerative and fast growth of individual cams. However, cam has limited lifespan as when the cam decays, its biomass and carbon content deteriorates biologically into its origin. Carbon dioxide will be released into the atmosphere if mature cam is not harvested and utilized. How about the socioeconomic benefits of bamboo? Disturbed portions of mining areas, if properly ameliorated and planted with the right species, they can be potential sources of raw materials for the local bamboo-based industries. They can provide opportunities for life employment, livelihood for the local communities, from the raising of planting stacks in the nursery, plantation and maintenance, harvesting and processing. Enterprise can also provide revenues to the, the LGUs. Mining operations in the country and commitment to use bamboo in rehab of portions disturbed mining areas. In 2016, there, there were about uh, 40 metallic mines and 62 non-metallic mines operating in the country. And uh, in addition, there are 1,473 mining applications under process in the country. The question is who or what and how many companies have been and will be using bamboo in the rehab of their disturbed mining areas? Is bamboo suitable and acceptable plant species for rehab? Are there mining companies committed to use bamboo for rehab? Are mine out areas suitable for rehab using bamboo? I would like to answer that, no? Rehabilitation strategies using bamboo or any plant species for that matter largely depend on one, detailed and specific knowledge on the biophysical conditions of the area needing rehabilitation. Suitability of the sites for rehab using bamboo or vice versa, suitability of bamboo to the site. And third is the knowledge, science and technology. Uh, knowledge on resources of using bamboo species in, in the rehabilitation. Suitability assessment for rehab of mine out areas using bamboo or any plant species would require knowledge of the extent or size of the area. You have to look at the biological characteristics of the site, the presence of remnant forest, uh, trees, paths, or gallery forest as potential source of seeds for natural regeneration or colonization by native plants. Presence of wildlife as uh, dispersal agents, you have to look at the soil type, whether it's clay, clay loam, sandy loam, or stony and rocky. The physical and chemical characteristics, uh, particularly the pH, the available nutrients. And of course, the drainage characteristics, the topography, the elevation, wind, light, and rain, particularly amount and frequency. What about the attributes of bamboo that make it potential for rehab in, uh, for use in rehabilitation? Well, bamboo has high adaptability to varied site conditions. It's easy to propagate. It has past growth rate and excellent regenerative ability. It produces extensive rhizome and a massive root system. It has green canopy, a very high litter pole, and pest uh, and disease resistant. More importantly, it is a multi-purpose plant species since this is producing very economic products. 
technologies on nursery and plantation are highly developed, packaged, and are available for adoption. Uh, if we look at the bamboos in the world, there are over 1,250 species, both monopodial and sympodial. The extreme, the north and the south, you, you, you find normally the monopodial, and uh, at the uh, near the equator, you find mostly sympodial. Uh, partic uh, uh, in the Philippines, particularly, there are over 100 species due to importation, mostly sympodial, but some monopodial were introduced from China. These are some of the commercial bamboo species that we have. Uh, I think uh, you are familiar with this, tinik, kiling, bilaw, bayog, bolo, giant bamboo, kayali, la laak, buho, and anos. Now, looking at the science and technology on bamboo, uh, there is already uh, bamboo nursery that is producing high quality planting stocks of sufficient quantity that will be available at the desired period of time. Um, you can propagate bamboo uh, through uh, several means, sexual or reproductive propagation, uh, sexual using the seeds. Um, you can also use uh, uh, cam cuttings, one node cam cuttings. Uh, and uh, of course we have developed already the, the, the process from selection, selection, uh, processing, treatment, putting in path, watering to other, to, uh, from, uh, from this uh, selection to other in maintenance activities. How about, uh, well, of course, this is uh, another shot of the use of uh, one node cam cuttings, um, but you can also use branch cuttings, particularly for species that are producing a big aristomatous branch. Um, example of which is uh, giant bamboo, bayog and uh, kawaiian tinik. Uh, you can also use uh, tissue culture and the protocol has been developed already uh, in uh, UPLB. Unfortunately, uh, this is not uh, being adopted. Um, the prints based in Yogyakarta has, have developed protocols for most of the clump forming bamboo species that we have in the Philippines. Uh, science and technology on bamboo plantation development. Uh, the ideal site conditions for bamboo plantation development is of course well-drained soil, especially sandy loam and clay loam with high organic matter, high pH, it is 5 to 6.5. However, it can adapt to varied types of soil conditions, whether it's moist, dry, or whether it's hilly or sloping, whether it is mountainous, it can thrive in marginal, degraded, deserted lands. Amendments or interventions are introduced. So you can see that uh, there is that uh, technology already that have been developed, particularly in bamboo plantation development, pre-planting phase, site preparation and planting from holding, hole digging, fertilizer application to planting and staking. Interplanting of agri-crops during early stage is uh, being encouraged so to maximize the use of, of uh, land. Uh, and uh, we have tried already integration of sweet potato, maize, pineapple and others and uh, we have found out that bamboo is a very good uh, green, green break. Now you can see examples of growth of bamboo in plantation with suitable site conditions. You can see an eight month old giant bamboo in Palawan. You can also see uh, the growth, the amazing growth of one year and two month old kawain tinik in Palawan also, and a yearly one to three years uh, growth of bolo in Quezon. Uh, the key to this is uh, the uh, provision of appropriate cultural management practices. Uh, you can also see a one year and eight month old kawaiian tinik in Palawan, the four year old giant bamboo in Batangas. Um, the, uh, again, the key to this is the provision of cultural management practices. Um, in Batangas, they are extensively using just chicken manure. Uh, this is the growth of bamboo in uh, plantation with suitable site conditions. As you can see, five-year-old kawain tinik in Lubao, Pampanga has, uh, is ready, very much ready for uh, harvesting already. 
provision of appropriate cultural management practices, the key to this. How about bamboo for rehab of disturbed portions of mining areas? Put mine out and mine tailings. There are initiatives of mining companies in the use of bamboo for rehab. As an example, this is in uh, MMDC in McVentures. The species used was uh, giant bamboo. The intervention was use terrace, minimize, minimize soil erosion. Soil amendment is uh, the use of topsoil and compost added during mulch, uh, planting and mulching after planting. But of course, the growth is affected by wind. And therefore, we recommended the uh, establishment of green breaks. The conditions here is substrate. The, the substrate is laterite. Uh, the area is relatively flat to uh, gradually sloping. Elevation is 400 meters above sea level. And the climate is type 2. Rainfall year-round, distinct from uh, uh, November to uh, March, pronounced low to medium uh, wind. Uh, laterite soil. In many of the mining areas, laterite soil is uh, dominant. And this uh, soil type is in iron and aluminum from in hot and wet tropical areas. Nearly all la laterites are rusty red in color to iron oxides. This is highly acidic. This is poor in potassium and magnesium. And usually lacks the fertility because of inten uh, uh, extensive, intensive leaching. But of course, when it when it is manured and irrigated, some laterites are very much suitable for grow, growing plantation crops: tea, coffee, rubber, cinchona, coconut, eka. What's more, it will be suitable for bamboo. Look at the growth performance of bamboo in mine out area. Interventions. Intervention here is uh, no soil overlay, but uh, the hole is uh, the hole size is big. And there is an addition of topsoil and compost and mulching. And you can see the growth appears up there. So, uh, this is giant bamboo. Now, uh, again, in, uh, in uh, uh, MMDC, Mark Ventures, the, closing, the, the uh, spacing was so close, it was done intentionally since the purpose is to provide immediate vegetative cover. Bamboo interplanted with diverse species of uh, trees such as agoho and mountain agoho and mangium. This actually is uh, recommended to uh, provide the biodiversity in the area. But the, the, because the purpose is revegetation, uh, inter, intercropping may not uh, also be good because competition will be intense between and among the plants. Bamboo can sponsor the trees once it's able to grow taller and be able to overtop the trees, vice versa. The uh, trees can overtop uh, bamboo. Uh, but of course, uh, because, of ba because bamboo is so aggressive, it, more likely it would smother the, the trees. To sustain the growth of bamboo, it would need more intense cultural management practices. A bamboo in mine out area, uh, this is uh, in PGMC. The topsoil, the topsoil is stockpiled during the surface mining operation. You was used to overlay the stony Rocky Mount mined out area. The trial planting was done. You can see growth. Each bamboo is provided with improvised dripper. Water is from nearby small water impoundment with continuous flow of water, believed to be a spring. You can see the amazing growth of uh, this later. No? Uh, the constraint here is too windy, particularly during monsoon season. In, uh, the bamboo is planted uh, on top of the ridge, which uh, actually uh, is not quite right. And uh, this is not provided with green break like Agoho and Mountain Agoho that were observed growing luxuriantly in the area. And therefore, we suggest that planting design would need some modifications. You can see the Amazing growth of bamboo in mine out area two years after, after planting. Uh, of course, uh, uh, similar interventions was done, like for example, addition of uh, organic matter, uh, particularly compost. Uh, this is again this is another shot of a uh, bamboo in mine out area after two years two years after planting. Uh, this is the growth of uh, bamboo in mine out area two years after planting. 
Uh, now, uh, because we want to improve the growth of the bamboo in, in the mine out areas and even in mine tailing areas, uh, there is a company, there is a supplier that uh, provided the uh, free uh, materials like uh, plant, plant made, humic acid, and uh, uh, quick growth. So uh, there is an ongoing trial using these uh, different uh, uh, fertilizers. Uh, we would like also to use uh, local biofertilizers and compost. For example, the ERDBDNR's high QBAM uh, one, uh, and uh, Biotech UPLB's MicroBAM. And of course, that the two uh, BAM are actually uh, uh, having mycorrhizal uh, fungus, uh, which actually uh, uh, improves the absorption of uh, phosphorus and uh, moisture, available moisture in the soil. Now, looking at uh, uh, manure, uh, we have found that, that specifically chicken dung is a good uh, soil amendment uh, material. It adds uh, organic matter uh, to the soil and increases the water holding capacity and beneficial bio biota in the soil. Thus, it is a good fertilizer. It provides NPK to plants more than other manure. Now we also look at mine tailings. Ad other mining companies do not have these mine tailings, but uh, some have. And therefore, we need to look at also how we would be able to uh, revegetate these uh, mine tailing areas. And you can see without intervention, bamboo definitely will not grow in this kind of waste, it's only gravelly substrate, very poor drainage. Uh, but when it is overlaid with topsoil, you can easily grow grass, you can uh, improve uh, the environment, and uh, you can even enhance the colonization of natural uh, colonization or natural revegetation, particularly if there is a patch of trees or uh, nearby uh, gallery forest. Uh, main tailings accordingly, one, uh, uh, one, to, uh, one meter to 1.5 meter topsoil overlay, you can see the amazing growth of grasses and uh, mangium and, and, and other uh, plant species. And in this area, bamboo can thrive well. Uh, and uh, we have spotted uh, some bamboo species growing uh, gr growing in uh, or planted in um, uh, disturbed mining site. This would indicate that there are potential adaptation in the area. For example, kawayan killing, growing well at the side of the mine, mine tailings and bamboo planted in the undisturbed site in the mining area. So both bamboo species can be sources of propagules for propagation in the nursery and planting in the disturbed portions of the mining areas. Uh, if forest trees and copy can thrive in mine tailings overlaid with topsoil, how much more for bamboo? Now, the, the, the key here is you need to provide uh, drainage because uh, most mine tailings have very poor drainage. Now, caution. Use of bamboo in the vegetation of disturbed portions of mining areas is possible. However, it is comparatively costly but money is not a problem for mining companies, particularly if they are concerned on the environment and welfare of the community. Bamboo should not be solely used in rehab to avoid monocropping. Mine out and mine tailings should have diversity of plant species, preferably native, that will cater to the diversity of fauna and even microorganisms that in totality will be the key to sustainability of the landscape. Expectations. Bamboo, because of its wide adaptation and fast growth, will thrive in disturbed mining areas and produce the camps or poles that can be harvested on the sixth or seventh year, similar to those bamboo grown in undisturbed by resortable site. May not be realized. Quality, uh, in terms of diameter and growth and, and, and height, uh, uh, quality of poles will definitely not similar to those grown in more suitable site. And therefore, time for harvesting will be much, much longer than expected. Uh, what are the training that we have provided to mining companies on bamboo? We have provided training on ecology, bamboo taxonomy, bamboo propagation in care in the nursery for propagation of quality planting stocks and planting in, undisturbed, in disturbed mining, mining areas. 
uh, I have provided a training on uh, bamboo propagation and culture in the nursery, as you can see in the slide. Uh, we have uh, assisted some uh, companies in the site assessment and uh, the potential interventions that uh, the area is that the areas are needing. And so uh, you can see that uh, there is that uh, site assessment and even site preparation, planting and care and maintenance also were also provided to the companies, to the mining companies. Now, what is the way forward? Of course, capacity building is very important. Appreciation training for executives of mining companies and specifically training of environmental unit and our office of public relations and the extension of the mining companies, including members of the community on a site assessment and the nursery intervention, necessary interventions, amendments in disturbed mining areas, establishment and management of bamboo nursery, production of quality planting materials, plantation development and management, planting for use of bamboo in disturbed mining areas and subsequent implementation by meted mining companies. Bamboo, the grass of hope, or rehab of mine out, mine tailings. This would need consideration of the mining sectors. It is their choice or it is your choice. For more information, the Bamboo Professionals provide technical assistance, consultancy services to various sectors interested in Bamboo production and utilization. Our officers and members are known by Bamboo ecologists, silviculturists, Bamboo utilization experts, community development expert, Bamboo shield processing expert, social impact AI and social development planning expert, and economics feasibility study expert. Uh, well, of course, we have written uh, some books, but uh, one of the uh, recent is the book written by members of the BPI through the sponsorship of the Philippine Bamboo Foundation Incorporated. So anybody interested for copies at, pre at reasonable price, you may contact the Philippine Bamboo Foundation Incorporated. This is Mar Mr. Mike Gomez, Executive Administrative and Training Officer, B uh, Philippine Bamboo uh, Foundation. Uh, we need to uh, uh, send our special thanks to uh, PBFI, MMDC, the Mac, uh, Mac Ventures, GMC, and TBIRD. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, end my presentation by uh, thanking you and thanking uh, God, the blessings. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, God bless to everybody. Mabambuhay kayong lahat. Mambuhay at maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Palihon, for sharing with us a very informative uh, discussion. And at this point, alam ko po yung mga viewers natin sa Facebook through Forest Management Bureau page ay marami na pong gustong itanong sa ating mga speaker. Kaya ngayon pa lang, comment na po ang inyong mga tanong sa comment section down below the Facebook streaming of FMB. And as well as to our Zoom participants, please drop your questions at our chat box. At sa putong ito, marami pa tayong pag-uusapan at alam ko na sa panahon ngayong pandemya, ang marami sa atin ay nag-iisip kung ano bang magandang inegosyo. At marahil dito nyo na mahanap kung ano ang magandang negosyo sa panahon ito. At hindi ko na patatagalin pa, we will now hear from our last but definitely not the least speaker, Mr. Mark Sultan Hersava, the Chief Executive Officer of Bambuhay. Good afternoon, Mr. Hersava. Hello, sir. Bambuhay Yes, po. hi, Bambuhay. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. Magandang hapon, Ms. Rhea, and to all our panelists. So, and to all our viewers, so hello po sa inyong lahat. So thank you very much, FMB, for having me here to discuss and share the success story in the bamboo implementation of a community-based social enterprise. Because this is really one of the, after hearing the talk of Dr. Well, about, on the, in planting the in mining industry, one of our challenges now is on how we can utilize those bamboo 
got planted, kung paano ba natin gamitin into a more sustainable and eco-friendly way. Kasi nga, one of the isa sa mga cons or consequence ng isang bago pag hindi mo siya ginamit, after it was, uh, after seven years, the tendency is, and later on, pag umabot pa ng up to 15 years and so on, hindi na magiging productive yung isang bago. So that's what we observe. So now, this is really the best material na, ginaga, na gagamitin in order to replace the wood, in order to replace those plastic products. And this afternoon, we are going to learn on it, on how we are going to have this kind of um, a community-based social enterprise that can really, na sabihin talaga natin na nakakatulong sa kalikasan, at the same time is nakakatulong sa ating um, sa mga magsasaka or sa mga mahihirap. So if we can see in this um, in the slide, the common business model that we have in the Philippines is the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. It's been a, a decade of a problem. Or yung mga negosyante lagi yung yumayaman at napapag-iwanan lagi yung mga magsasaka. And sadly, the 40 richest families in the Philippines in the Forbes wealth less than accounted for 76% of the country's gross dom domestic income growth, which is sobrang nakakalungkot nito. Tayo yung number one in Asia. Next to that is Thailand at 35%. Then we have uh, Malaysia and Japan. So in terms of inequality, so sobrang, ano niya po, sobrang layo niya. And one of the problem na nakikita natin is of course the deforestation. Okay, so itagdag natin yung problema dun sa wealthiest and now we have the deforestation problems. And we are doing reforestation since 1910 but kung titingnan natin ngayon closely is ang baba na nung mga ano natin. Closely this, um, around 700,000 around 700,000 hectares na lang yung naiwan natin na virgin forest out of 16 million hectares. And it continuously depleting. And if in case hindi natin to gawa ng paraan, by 2025, the, all the forests ng ating, ng Pilipinas will be gone. At baka maranasan na natin the wildfires, etc. na nangyayari sa ibang bansa. Uh, so one of the root costs that contributes to 34% ng deforestation natin is the slush and burn farming. And of course, there are millions of Filipino na nag engage into slush and burn farming. Sometimes, cause me, our family, my, fa my, my father, is dating nagkakaingin for almost 20 years. But the thing is, tinanong ko yung tatay ko, kung gusto niya ba na nag nagkakaingin, sabi niya, no. I don't like to cut trees. But the thing is, I can't sacrifice. Hindi ko kayang matiis sa akin sa nili that my family ay walang kinakain. So I need to do this in order to feed my family. And the impact is sobrang, um, sobrang laki. 34% is big enough. Of course, illegal lagging is still, is still nandun pa rin. So according to Michael Gorbachev, we did a new economic model the planet is overboard. We have plastic pollution in the Philippines. We are third in the uh, we, uh, Philippines is the third biggest plastic polluter in Asia, and a lot more. Our oceans and a lot at ang dami pang mga problema na kinakaharap natin. So within this, how we are going to address those environmental impact? And now idagdag ko lang, de ba? Why we are now naka quarantine or naka lockdown? It's because of the environmental degradation. It's because of our fault. Kasalanan natin yon. Okay, kung bakit tayo naka-lockdown, it's because of our environmental destruction. 
And one of the common practice here in the Philippines in establishing a community-based social en uh, enterprise basically is this started with community building, the nature conservation, behavioral change, and economic empowerment. Always nahuhuli to, which is no pinag-aralan namin, it should be the economic empowerment should be the first. So ganito lagi yung nangyayari, kaya medyo mababa yung success rate natin in terms of rehabilitation in terms of reforestation effort. So that's why, um, because of those problems, Bambuhay and the Sustainable Planet was founded. Saving the planet, saving lives. So a social enterprise, we focus on bamboo agriculture, circular economy, and dedicated in innovating sustainable products, so solutions to help the planet from plastic pollution, deforestation, mitigate the effect of climate change and provide sustainable livelihood to the farmers living below the poverty line using this impact formula. So what we are doing is economic empowerment first because most of the farmers are living below the poverty line. We really need to uplift their lives. And then after that, going back to behavioral change, then sa kapapasok yung community building and if we're able to get the trust of the people, Nature conservation. So yun po yung last na ginagawa namin. Okay, so this is the impact formula that we are doing for almost how many years already in our company. So community-based bamboo social enterprise is an important instrument for the, for the realization and potential among marginalized and deprived community isolated from the mainstream economy and it's important in bringing social upliftment and its importance in environmental restoration and preservation. So nalaman na natin kanina of how important it is. So the development really relies on the active participation of the community members who take charge of planning and problem solving. So as one of the major issue parent dito sa mga developmental natin, like for example, NGOs or any organizations, because we have a target, so inaano namin, ay hindi dapat ito yung gawin nyo. We are dictating the community. Within that, hindi nagkakaroon ng ownership yung, yung, yung community. So we really need to make that the community will be the one who are going to make a decision in terms of establishing and, re and rehabilitating their environment in order na magkaroon ng sense of ownership on the local population. So different approach from private sectors, the, the business activity is undertaken as a means of achieving the benefits for the community. The private sector, kung titignan natin yan, diba, sa Pilipinas, yung, yung mga negosyante lang laging yung mayaman, lagi yung mga farmers is napapag-iwanan. Okay, sabi nila yung bamboo or yung any commodities is sobrang baba. Okay, pagkuha sa farmer din, pag binenta sa consumers, sobrang taas na. And it's been a decade of problem and we really need to address this. Because the impact of this is there is a continuous deforestation na nangyayari pag hindi natin to if there is a continuous poverty na nangyayari doon sa community. So how are we able to do it? So we have this, um, this model that we have the community mostly is nasa rural areas and then we so now since though I am a son of a farmer but still finish my studies so ito yung naging intervention, binalikan to yung mga community that we have. So mostly, these communities, is, uh, di ba yung mga common problem, if uh, there's a government assistance, etc. Then pag naubos na yung government assistance, balik ulit sa dating gawin. Or sometimes ginagawa ng kabuhayan. So there is a professional uh, intervention. Yung ginagawa namin is partnership. In Bambuhay, the farmers, yung mga empleyado, sila din yung nagmamayari ng kumpanya. It was not owned by a certain individual. Here, community partnership. So these are, ito yung mga community partners namin. Mga slash and burn, uh, mga dati, okay? Dating slash and burn farmers na and indigenous people farmers. So we focus on this, on this, ano, on this, um, on these communities or on these beneficiaries. It's because they are the most vulnerable or they are the most exploited sector in the community. So that's why nung kinakausap namin sila, so yun na nga yung naging ano din namin, yun yung naging intervention. They don't want to really cut trees. They don't want to really do kaingin or charcoal making, but they don't have a choice. They need to feed their family. 
and other vulnerable sector in the community. So, sa nabanggit ko, this is our impact formula. So, how we do it? So, we do, we do a community social enterprise, and we have this partnership model. So, we have some DTI, provide equipment, DNI, DNR on the land tenure, and we have some support from the, from, the, uh, from the private sector, and of course, the support that we are doing in the people's organization, or basically, some of our uh, beneficiaries are located in um, in the watershed areas, it's because yun yung mga isa sa mga uh, kailangang i-ano, i-address na mga um, i-address na mga problema. And we really need to have that kind of so this is how we do it. So we have fair trade practices, uh, yung pag-purchase namin ng farmers, mas mataas compared to ano, and then we provide also employment. And this is our food safety bamboo. Uh, going back to ano is we have this in Caranla Nueva Ecija, which is Talavera Watershed located. And also we have in Pantabangan, this is the first bamboo toothbrush manufacturing in the Philippines. And here, from slash and burn farmers in behavioral chains, they are now the restorer of the earth, yung mga tao. So from uh, yung mga beneficiaries namin. So sila, ito na yung mga ginagawa nila ngayon. So nagbago, nagtatanim na ng pudo, etc. instead na nagpuputol. And community building. So we are establishing a community. And of course, andun na yung nature conservation. Like the people more aware of what uh, yung mga pla pagdating sa plastic. And then this is what we are doing in our planting. We are not using any plastic. And the people in the community are more aware Okay, doon sa mga nagiging environmental, magi, naging impact nila or ma, nagiging eco-friendly na yung lifestyle nila. And this is our product line. So we have the bamboo toothbrush because we really move forward to circular economy. And then we have this bamboo straw. This is our first product. Then may mga waste product. We process it into bamboo waste, activated carbon. And then we have some, the, the smoke during the, Charcoaling process was captured and in turned into organic fertilizer and of course bamboo shoot and we develop the bamboo tea especially the tinik is really the best for the bamboo uh, for tea that tastes like the tea that na kinoconsume nyo sa mga um, sa mga restaurants or don sa uh, yung mga sikat na mga tea and green production so we have this in our production we are not using any sack na made of plastic we are using this kacha. And of course, using this bamboo curtain in our production. And we have this, we establish also this Grow a Billion Bamboo Challenge 2030. This is a collaborative program with the different organizations. So let's take a look with our growth milestones. Kasi kung titignan natin, is a community-based social enterprise is really profitable. So let's take a look at this. We started basically in a very small amount because I don't have really that big savings during my uh, during when I started this uh, the enterprise in Karanglan Nueva Ecija, which we started the bamboo straw, and uh, we have we started it, and then we have an additional investment of around uh, two million in 2000 and 2019, 2018 and 2019, and we're um, in two years time. Uh, in yes, in more than two years, we're able to have a sales of more than 14 million pesos and this is how we started so we started with this open field bamboo production facility then it turns into this on in 2018 so we have this around 1000 square meter and of course the bamboo toothbrush production facility and how we able to impact those people so we have now farmers out of poverty we have 52 farmers already out of poverty we provided livelihood for around 181 families, we, we generated for around 48. So basically, Karangla Nueva Ecija is a third class municipality. So it's located in Talavera Watershed and Pantabangan is uh, located in Pantabangan Watershed. So we help 14 kaingineros. So 14 kaingineros na po yung aming natulungan na kung saan ngayon is hindi na sila nagkakaingin. They are now, some of them uh, engaged into bamboo harvesting and some of them is engaged and nag-employ po sa amin. And we're able to convert more than 28 hectares na yung kinakaingin nila, kinakonvert na namin ngayon into a bamboo forest. And we eliminated, because our product is bamboo straw or drink, bamboo drinking straw and replacement of single-use bamboo straw, we're able to eliminate for almost 500,000 pounds of carbon, uh, of 500,000 pounds of plastic 
or equivalent to 8.6 million pounds of carbon dioxide. And our partner, together with our partners, we're able to plant bamboo. 148,000 bamboos we're able to plant. So if we can see, we have a balance. So sabi nga nila, I think you are already a millionaire because the company already earned a millions. So we are very true with our vision in Bambuhay that we, you can consider me, I am a millionaire. That's my tagline myself. I am a millionaire without millions of money, but with millions of people impacted doon sa ginagawa namin. Because it is not the typical business. So it should be, ganito dapat yung ginagawa ng mga, ng mga negosyo. That it should be equality. So dapat na buo, uh, buo lahat, pati sa community to the environment, is kailangan natin i-balance. Not just all about profit. It's all about a balance on how we can have this balance in prosperity, in caring our planet and our people. And this is one of our success story. He is nagkakaingin siya dati, dalawang hektarya. At ito yung bahay niya dati. Ngayon, ito na. Si Carlito already earning around 12,000 to 26,000 monthly. And a lot of uh, social and environmental impact. And in building a community-based social enterprise, we're able to reach the world. So we're able to build a global brand in just two years. So this is in Saudi Arabia. We represent the Philippines in the 2019 uh, entrepreneurship company as the grand winner of the ASEAN Impact Challenge and in London United Kingdom where I presented our model to Meghan Merkel to Justin Trudeau and to the different global around 2,000 leaders around the world and we represent the Philippines in the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in The Hague and also uh, we won as the grand winner of the Start Upper of the Year in the Start Upper France in Bali Indonesia and also we will represent the Philippines in the 2019 and the 2018 uh, action acceleration winner. So we won also this um, this competition in Silicon Valley, California. So that's how the community-based social enterprise focus on bamboo. Ganon kalawak yung narich namin. And let's take a look with one of my talk with this video during my talk in One Young World summit in United Kingdom last I grew up in extreme poverty in one of the most conflict-ridden places in the Philippines, in Sultan Kudarat province, where the poverty rate is 48%. We considered ourselves lucky if we could eat one full meal of rice in a week. For almost 20 years, we struggled to survive. We live in a classroom at the back of the church and in a 20 square meter hut. No matter how hard my parents work in the farm, we still struggled to make ends meet. Back then, I had never heard about deforestation or climate change. My father earned 60 US dollars a month from slush and burn farming, which he used to feed his 11 siblings. We often use single-use plastics and sachets. We did this because we live in absolute poverty and we didn't know any better. I was fortunate enough to complete my education and look for a job to support my family. During this time, in the span of the year, I experienced two super typhoons, the hottest measured temperature in the Philippine history, and a serious breakdown in my health, which almost led to my death. I later discovered that my severe allergic rhinitis was likely caused by environmental pollutants. This was the first time I had faced the direct consequences of climate change. The following year, 
I founded Bambuhai, a social enterprise focused on circular economy. We manufacture eco-friendly products like bamboo charcoal briquettes and reusable bamboo straws because the Philippines is the third biggest plastic polluter in the world. We specifically partner with rural farmers living below the poverty line to tackle environmental degradation. We focus on doing this through cultivating bamboo. Why bamboo? It is a major renewable plant that plays an important role in forest and landscape restoration. It is an efficient rainwater harvester and the fastest growing plant in the planet. It helps prevent soil erosion and it captures more carbon dioxide than any other plant. To date, we have reforested 542 hectares of land through our bamboo agroforestry program. We have also sold close to 400,000 bamboo straws in the past two years in replacement of the single-use plastic. We have also introduced our bamboo charcoal briquettes to local communities in replacement of wood charcoal, a renewable biomass fuel that reduces greenhouse gases due to its carbon neutral status. I am also especially proud that we have helped approximately 2,000 former slash and burn farmers and charcoal makers out of poverty. We have ended there. We have ended their need to cut down trees as we have provided them with sustainable livelihood and employment opportunities. I have engaged in this work because I understand the link between poverty and exploiting the environment, having lived it myself. From 1999 to 2018, the Philippines has lost over a million hectares of forest. I know that people desperate for wood and food like my family surely contributed to this problem, but our actions were insignificant relative to the immense and relentless damage caused by lagging companies and harmful government policy. However, despite those wealthy CEOs and politicians are not the ones suffering the most from the consequences of the climate change. It is the rural villager in my beloved province in Sultan Kudarat, which is predicted to sink by one meter, whose home will be flooded. It is the struggling farmers who are suffering from severe water shortages and droughts that will be the worst hit by food insecurity. I nearly lost my life to climate change, but that experience led me to discover bamboo, the plant of hope. Our environment is in peril, but I believe the solutions to this crisis are there in nature. Thank you. Okay, so yes, so yun po siya. So one of really one of the challenge now, because this is really because like we have the law already in the in the um, in the Senate, uh, na um, malapit na nasa second to third reading, uh, all about the Philippine Industry Council that we are going to have really a community-based uh, enterprise or a social enterprise. That's because it really helped. Number one, it lessened the carbon emission so that it will not hindi siya laging nagko congest inside uh, Metro Manila. Kasi yun lagi, yun lagi yung nagiging problem natin. Like in, in starting a business always, okay, so ulitin ko na lagi yung negosyante lang lagi yung, yung, may, yung umaangat sa buhay or nagpa-prosper. So we really need to change that. That we really need to balance. And we are already suffering a lot of the environmental impact that we have. And also, we're not able to... Um, I'm not able to include to our presentation. So basically, we're able to have this uh, bamboo facial. So medyo hindi siya nakikita yan. So this one. So we're able to develop. This is one of our pivot project. 
So we're able to develop this bamboo face shield in partnership with FPRDI BOST. So community-based social enterprise is really one of the most important one of the most important factor in pushing in the bamboo industry. Because it really, it resonates, it balances the planet, it balances the benefits with our environment, the benefits to the people, and to the benefits to the people, and the benefits itself to the enterprise. So that's, if we can see, like in China, kung titignan natin, they have a lot, ang dami nilang villages, ang dami nilang community-based ng enterprise. It's because it really create more employment and more opportunity dun sa mga, uh, sa, mga lo, sa mga rural areas. And we need that in better normal. In facing this after this pandemic, we really need to create, we really need to develop the rural areas in order that we, that we are not going to fall up, na hindi pa ta, hindi hindi tayo mag-suffer pa ng mas matagal. We really need to decongest that Metro Manila and the nearby provinces and let's develop a community-based social enterprise. Let's always remember that we only have one planet. Or it takes one enterprise to take care of it and it starts with you. So we only have one planet and it takes care and it takes one person to take care of it and it starts with you and it starts with bamboo maraming maraming salamat po wow that was a refreshing presentation from mr hersava maraming maraming salamat sir biruin nyo napakarami pa palang produkto na maaaring magawa mula sa mga kawayan akala natin mga furniture lang pero ngayon naglipa na yung mga personal hygiene and beauty products sa merkado na lahat gawa sa bambu so maari po nating i-explore yan lalo na sa ating mga kababayan na gustong magnegosyo sa panahon ngayong pandemya biruin niyo kikita na kayo nakatulong pa kayo sa kalikasan that may be the last presentation for this webinar series but the program isn't over yet. So our speakers will be joining us again later for the question and, question and answer portion. So please, 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 sa lahat po ng ating mga participants dito sa Zoom, pakidrop lang ang inyong mga katanungan sa ating chat box. Gayun din sa ating mga participants sa Facebook streaming ng Forest Management Bureau. Ilagay nyo lang po ang inyong mga katanungan sa comment section sa ibaba. At this point, we will take a five-minute quick break Break. But before anything else, we would like to thank all the DNR field offices, the Senros, Penros, and regional offices for organizing the bamboo planting activity, which was done simultaneously during the kickoff ceremony in the House of Representatives, led by Deputy Speaker Deo Gracias Victor Divi Savellano last September 18. We also would like to thank those who participated, LGUs, DNRs, partner people's organizations, the Philippine Bamboo Industry Development Council and its member government agencies, namely DTI, DA, DOSD, and DILG. I will see you again after this quick break.
So again, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back again to our second episode of the Golden Grass Talk. At this point, we will now take some questions from our participants. Yung mga hinihingi po natin katanungan kanina dito sa Zoom at sa Facebook. Kaya lang, meron pong mga ilang katanungan na hindi masasagot during our airtime. But don't you worry because the Forest Management Bureau, with the help of our guest speakers, will still respond to each one of them sa pamamagitan po ng Facebook at ng email. Simula na po natin ang mga katanungan. Our FMB team have collated these questions from our participants. So, first question para po kay Dr. Palihon. Dr. Palihon, are you ready for yes. your first question? All right. Your first Masa, question, masana. you've mentioned earlier that bamboo can adapt to various types of soil. Is there a specific bamboo species that is suitable for each type of soil? For example, in a sandy loam type of soil, etc. Sir? Uh, there are a lot of uh, bamboo species. And each species has, has its, uh, what do you call this? Has its own site requirements. And therefore, if you, if, you want to, uh, if you want to use a particular bamboo species, we need to look at what is the site, what is its condition, and uh, look at bamboo, what is its requirements, and if the requirements of the bamboo would match site conditions, then definitely they will be, this species will be very much suitable and uh, uh, compatible with that particular specific site. All right, sir. Thank you so much for your question. For our next question, directed naman po ito kay Mr. Hersava. Sir, what activities or interventions have you done for you to conclude that there are behavioral changes happening with your partner organizations? Mr. Hersava, the floor is now yours. Okay, so one thing is yung na uh, observe naman like in terms of impact in our community na nag-change sa yung behavior. Number one, yung mga farmers kasi mahilig yan sila manigarilyong. Ngayon, hindi na naninigarilyo. That's because of its environmental impact. So number two is mas naging aware sila like in terms of their uh, usage of plastic and then in terms of their care. So it's really quietly different. So paunti-unti, after one year, nakita namin yung changes. Um doon sa behavior ng mga tao. Because as mentioned nga ni Ma'am Chita na ang daming mga forest fire or anything. So ngayon, uh, the farmers now or yung mga dating nagkakaingin helping in uh, helping in on how pa, paano ma ma maaksyonan or masolusyonan itong mga forest fire. And of course, we, able, we as I mentioned sa presentation, we able to convert those kaingins ng mga dating nagkakaingin in, we are now rehabilitating into a bamboo forest. Sir, follow up lang po kasi yung tanong ay tungkol doon sa mga partner organizations yes. natin. Pero sa bahagi po nyo, nagkaroon po ba kayo ng assessment doon sa mga consumers? May pagbabago ba sa kanilang mga preference? Kung halimbawa mula sa plastic, mas gusto na ba nila yeah. ng mga environment or eco-friendly products ngayon? Uh, so malaki na yung preference. Like in the Philippines, 83% of the consumer in the Philippines wants to purchase a product which has a great social, uh, positive social and environmental impact. So tayo yung pinakamataas around the, around the globe. Basically, because in the, in the whole world, only 65%. Like for example, in our uh, company, I started it September 2017. Ako lang mag-isa yung gumagamit ng bamboo straw. But after more than two years, we have now millions of users. Yes. So there is really a changes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Hersava, for your answers. Now we go back to Dr. Palihon. Sir, the question is, just would like to ask if you have come across Bima Bamboo. How is it when used in mined out areas? The question is from Maria Elena Pareñaque. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, I answered her uh, through uh, through the uh, Q&A portion. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
uh, bima bamboo is just like our kawayan killing. It is uh, easy to propagate. It is also fast growing. Uh, of course, we have not tried uh, using it in, in mine out, but uh, since it is sim almost similar to our kawayan killing, definitely it will. But I do not want to recommend bima bamboo in uh, using in uh, using um, uh, rehabilitation of mine out or a disturbed portion of mining areas or in, in any rehabilitation uh, work because this is exotic. This is newly introduced in the country and we do not know what, uh, what this uh, species carries. You know? It may be a carrier of uh, pests and diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, we need to uh, promote our own uh, species. We have a lot of species that uh, can easily thrive in uh, in mine out or e even in other uh, degraded areas. Mm -hmm. So can you name some of the uh, local bamboo species that we have here in the Philippines? Oh yes. Um, uh, do you want it to uh, in uh, local language or uh, in scientific <laughs> name? Sir, so uh, you must have, uh, ng we have bamboo sa Bobiana. Yeah. Okay. We have kawayan uh, tinik. We have kawayan killing. We have anos, mm -hmm. we have buho, we have uh, yali, we have uh, aak, we have bayog, we have uh, uh, giant bamboo, we have bolo. Uh, there are quite a lot. Uh, th these are uh, I have shown this in in my slides. Uh, but of course, there are also other introduced species. Actually, kawayantinik is not ours. It oh. has, but, but it it is a naturalized uh, species, and it has been in in the country for long, long period of time already. And so we uh, we uh, accept it as our native al already. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to add. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm just I'm just going to add on sa ano ni ano, cause, uh, this is what we are promoting also. Kung ano ba yung mga top five na bambo na so na napapakinabangan natin and can be can be planted also in the mine area. So our top five kasi is the giant bamboo, the kawayan tinik, bayog, killing, and buho. So that's the top hmm. five na most uh na masabi natin na maraming gamit na klasing bamboo and very perfect uh, in terms of business yun yung magandang uh, gamitin para sa negosyo. Thank you so much, sirs. Now, balik tayo kay Mr. Horsava muli. Ha? You've mentioned in your presentation that bamboo helps to minimize waste. How does this help in maintaining waste management in the Philippines? Okay, so like for example, in terms of uh, plus, uh, bamboo straw, like now, as I mentioned in my presentation, we're able to eliminate 500,000 pounds of plastic yes. for a more than million of um, clients. So, uh, so within that, that's a big help already, okay, that we're able to eliminate more than millions of pieces of plastic straw that na enter the ocean. So that's big enough. That's equivalent for around 8.6 million uh, pounds of carbon dioxide eliminated from our environment. And if you can see in our operation, wala talaga, uh, halos lahat ng part ng bamboo ginagamit namin up to the leaves. Diba? Nabanggit ko kanina na ginagamit namin siya sa, uh, as iced tea because I'm a food scientist. So I developed it into iced tea that tastes like the tea na ginagamit natin ngayon. And yung mga waste product namin turns to activated um, carbon. And then, nabanggit ko din kanina na yung smoke captured and it turns into as a fertilizer at pwede din gamitin na home cleaner. So basically, within that, kung titignan natin, we're able to minimize the waste na nag-enter sa ating um, landfills. All right. For this next question, kahit sino po sa inyo maari pong sumagot, Bamboo plantation is believed to be a sanctuary for snakes. How can I ensure the safety of the people or tourists how can we eliminate snakes without destroying or burning bamboo? The question is from Marshall Mateo. Okay, so I'm going to answer first. Okay, so yes, sir, basically go on. that idea is a myth. <laughs> okay, so ang nangyari lang kung bakit doon pumupunta, like for example, sa mga palayan, usually doon natin nakikita, why it is there's, there's a lot of snakes in the bamboo because that's the only habitat remain. Yun mm -hmm. lang yung naiwan. Because basically, hindi talaga yun yung habitat ng snakes. But it's mm. because kinalbo na natin yung kagubatan, yun yung naiwan kasi usually, sabi ko nga, doon nakikita sa, pala, sa palayan, yun na lang yung naiwan na may shade na medyo malamig, kaya siya nandoon yung mga snakes. So hindi talaga siya, 
sorry, it's not true. Okay? So, hmm. if in case na diverse lang talaga yung environment natin, if in case uh, maganda pa yung ano natin, yung resource, ay yung forest land, etc. Basically, the snake will be just anywhere. Okay? Kahit saan sila to live, uh, nandun lang talaga yung mga, ano, mga snake. So, hmm. hindi niya natural sure. habitat yon. Dr. Palihon, baka may gusto po tayong idagdag. Uh, I would like to have uh, snakes in my uh, bamboo farm. You know why? Because uh, they, uh, the, the snakes are predators of uh, rats. rats. Mm. And therefore, the bamboo will be free from, uh, free from uh, destruction uh, uh, done by rats. No? Mm. Uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Gersaba has already, um, uh, what do you call this, uh, answered that. No? Of course, uh, mm. uh, snakes would be looking for a very good habitat. Yeah. And uh, as mentioned, it is uh, one of the remaining ha uh, uh, habitat that that can be available for for rats, for for, for snakes. Uh, as mentioned, a snakes can be anywhere. Even in my house, there is a snake. Uh, well, of course, um, even Tama, even sir. in the uh, even in Congress, there are snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Political snakes, my <mayon>, sir. <laughs> Go on, sir. Meron pa po tayong idadagdag? Or we can move on to the not another question. Alright, sige, yeah, move on na tayo sa, sa susunod oh. na tanong. Okay, for Mr. Hersava, is the bamboo organic fertilizer safe to use in trees and vegetables? Uh, so far, it, uh, nagamit pa lamang siya po sa palay at saka sa mango. So far, hindi pa siya na-experiment to others. So, subject for experimentation to other to other applications po. So, yung dalawa pa lang po na species yung na-apply. Okay. okay. Um, can I answer? Can I add? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. If, you have a, if you have bamboo, bamboo has a very high liter fall. And uh, the, the liter is uh, normally used in, in other countries, normally used to grow a mushroom. No? So you have, you have uh, bamboo shoot, you have litter, you have mushroom, uh, you have uh, cams, and um, uh, when you use the, uh, the uh, litter as a substrate for, uh, for uh, mushroom, of course mushroom would uh, contribute to the decomposition of the litter and the byproduct would be what? Would be compost. And this compost uh, can be used uh, in any plant. Because this is, uh, of course, uh, compost is rich in uh, in nutrients. No, so whether whether you use it in palai, whether you use it in vegetables, whether you, but of course, it is also very important that you mix it with other type of compost, like for example, uh, compost uh, uh, out of uh, out of manure, for example, no, or uh, manure out of uh, uh, leaves of uh, ipil ipil and. Uh, and uh, kakawate, which which uh, are known to be rich in nitrogen, no? Yeah. So, Dr. Palihon, dahil nandiyan na rin po kayo, pakisagot na rin po itong susunod na katanungan. Are there any differences between planting bamboo species in mined out areas and planting in an open area? If yes, what is the growth rate per day of bamboo on a mined out area, sir? out and what planting in mine out and i'll repeat the question sir are there any differences between planting bamboo species in mined out areas and planting in an open area if yes what is the growth rate per day of bamboo on a mined out area <laughs> okay uh Sir, naka-mute po kayo. Please unmute. You will, you will normally uh, encounter substrates that are stony and gravelly or laterite. No? Uh, expect that the growth of bamboo without intervention would be much, much slower as compared to open uh, with suitable soil. Uh, in, a, in a suitable soil, you would expect that uh, 
uh, the uh, the uh, uh, emergence of uh, shoot and uh, the growth of cam would be would would take uh, about only uh, probably uh, two to three months or three three to four months. Uh, the growth of bamboo in mine out can can also take that that long, but the uh, the height of the cam would be much smaller mm. as compared to the open with suitable soil. So susugan ko na rin itong tanong na ito no sa panahon ngayon ng may pandemya marami po ang mga umusbong na tinaguri ang plantito at plantita. Now at our homes with our limited space posible po ba na magtanim po ng mga kawayan if yes po pwede po ba nga magbigay lang kayo ng ilang tips paano po namin yun itatanim at paano po namin yun payayabungin Okay uh, oh, sige 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 Go on sige, sir Mark. Sava Okay yeah, personally I have here ang recommended ko is the binggit bamboo yun yung for ano talaga for ornamental so i have here doon sa ano ko sa backyard ko so meron talaga ako sa bahay noon kasi nga it's because of it minsan pinapasok ko din siya sa room but uh, ang mga 3 days ko lang siya pinapasok kasi in order na yung growth din ng mga bagong next sprout so basically i think there's a lot also is the uh, so far yun yung nakita kong pinakamagandang um babo kasi hindi siya ganoon kalaki uh, yes. very fit talaga siya for ano lang for or as a bamboo ornamental plant. All right. Dr. Palihon, baka may gusto po kayong idagdag. Yes, yes. Um, actually, as uh, mentioned by uh, Mark, uh, there are quite a lot of species. Uh, and one of the uh, one of the uh, dwarf species that we have is the uh, bambusa multiplex, the variegated and the not, not, not variegated one. No, uh, You can put them even in, uh, you, you can put them in pots, even in pots, no? Uh, of course, there are quite a lot of ornamental uh, ornamental uh, bamboos. It, uh, if if you have maybe a, a little wide uh, um, loan, then you can use uh, yellow bamboo or the uh, uh, brachycladum, Iskisustatum uh, brachycladum. Uh, you can you can even use uh, the introduce uh, uh, what do you call this this uh, uh, wamin bamboo sa wamin. Uh, this is the what do you call this uh, um, Buddha Buddha bamboo, no? Uh, there are quite a lot, uh, and uh, we have a lot of introduced species: the Thailand bamboo, uh, the pole bamboo, and many other bamboos, no? That uh, you can use in your loan, particularly if you want if you want to screen your screen your house with uh, with bamboo, no? Mm -hmm. So there are quite a lot of choices. Okay, after ata after... nito doc. Yeah, after ata nito doc, bara, baka marami nang magko-collect ng mga ano ng babo after this webinar. Baka yun ulit no, mahal na ulit siya. <laughs> Magkano po ba ang bentahan ng bamboo for ano mga plantito at plantita ngayon sir? Ah, ngayon at uh, 350 yung binggit bamboo bili ko ha, 350. So medyo mahal-mahal din ng konti. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Hersava, Bamboo High committed to grow 1 billion bamboo by 2030. What yes. are your plans for the next five years in order to achieve this? Okay, so one thing is, um, so napakita ko kanina, so one of our, ano, one of our plans is we launched this initiative. Um, for a while, I'm just going to show. So we launched the 1 billion bamboo challenge. So for those in the, ano, in the, in our webinar, you can check. Uh, can I just share a screen for just a while? So here, one bamboo challenge. So that's our challenge. So uh, in every 50 pesos, you can contribute to GCash or through bank or to anything. So every 50 pesos, if you are going to scan that, uh, donate. so yung 90 people here or a lot more people, you can scan now in order to donate 50 pesos. So we have this crowdfunding. That every P, uh, you go to contribute. They're going to contribute 50 pesos. So every 50 pesos is we are going to plant one bamboo, and we are going to, and we have a lot of partnership also uh, that we are developing uh, nationally and internationally in order to make this um, this campaign a reality. Because currently, according to FMP, mayroong around 1.5 million hectares yung na determine nila na suitable na pwedeng pagtamnan ng bamboo out of 
around 7 million na denew, uh, deforested and denuded land. So basically, we consult also FMB with this program. And this is one thing uh, sinasabi namin to encourage everyone participation, not just us, uh, not just not just depend on the company. So what is 50 pesos? And you will become part of this big vision. So the late now. Okay, thank you. Let's promote pa, ano? <laughs> Okay, next question is directed to Dr. Palihon. Sir, you've mentioned earlier that NGB required 20% of mined out areas needed to be revegetated by bamboo. What yes. other plant species are possible to grow on this kind of soil structure? Okay, um, we normally uh, recommend the native species that are growing right there at the mine, mine, mining areas. Uh, and there are quite a lot. Uh, so what you need to do is to look at the site, what are the species that are growing there, and uh, make a list, and uh, try to look, look for uh, uh, propagules, seeds, or even cuttings can be, uh, can be collected. Uh, of course, uh, uh, in many mining companies, they use a lot of exotic species, but uh, uh, we we want we want our uh, forest to be back, and and serve, therefore we need to use our own native species. And in the in in the mining sites in the mining areas, there are gallery forests that uh, are uh, left by the, by by the mining operations. And these are sources, potential sources of uh, seeds, potential sources of propagules for the propagation of our native species that you can use in the mining areas. And as I have mentioned, you need to really make your mining areas as diverse as possible. So use not one native species, not two, not three, but many native species. And they can easily grow because they are native to the area. There is, they are very much adapted. Yes, sir. Sir, may isa pang tanong sa inyo. How long will it take a marginalized, degraded, mined out, or mining area to produce quality bamboo poles to be able to supply the needs of local industries assuming that survival is not an issue? The question is from Paul Cuadra. <laughs> Paul, you answer, the, you answer your question. Uh, you know better than me. Si Paul, si Paul Quadra ba yan? Si Paul Quadra? Yes, sir. The question is... Yeah. He, he knows better than me. Anyway, um, of course, it will take a lot of time before you can produce a, uh, a quality bamboo similar to the those that are grown in suitable site. No? But I'm not saying that you cannot use uh, bamboo that you have produced uh, in a mine-out uh, mine area uh, even even small, even small in diameter and even small in size. Uh, there are furniture makers that are looking for a small diameter uh, size uh, bamboo. I, I think uh, Mark can, can attest to this, that uh, he may be looking for for uh, stunted, uh, more dense uh, bamboo that you can use in furniture and even in, even in handicraft making. Okay, one last question naman tayo para kay Mr. Hersava. Sir, what is the best treatment to prolong the lifespan of bamboo furniture, example, bed, chair, and bahay kubo? Ang tanong ay mula po kay Ms. Cora Ferrer. Okay, so uh, currently, if in case it, it, it is, uh, kami kasi, uh, pati yung mga ginagamit namin chemical is really eco-friendly. So basically, the best method na natural is really yung uh, three weeks na ipapaano mo po siya sa ano sa ilog uh, running water or either in the, the in the salt water also like yung sa dagat so that's basically the natural way but still uh, so uh, so far hindi siya ganun ka feasible it's because uh, na, yung ganun treatment like us we are using um, thermal modification so basically ngayon yung bago naming technology is by means of heat high heat lang around 350 degrees celsius um Dinedevelop pa namin, uh, dinedevelop pa ngayon ng FPRDI, uh, yung, ano, yung technology, we partner with them uh, with that ano, with the technology. Currently, like for example, 
Uh, for the Baha'i Kubo, usually uh, the if in case okay lang sa inyo na gumamit ng ano ng chemical, basically there's a lot of chemicals so ayokong sabihin ko ano yon, paki-search niyo na lang po. Uh, cause basically our company is really promoting on eco-friendly. So basically sa amin is drying. Um mayroon din uh, yung technology talaga namin na ginamit, we use baking soda and salt. Yes. Kasi nga food, uh, we are yung kinag uh, yung uh, yung ex yung ano kasi namin is yung industry namin is we are in the food industry. So we are using salt and baking soda. So my formulation yon, uh, which is nakano kasi yon. So sorry hindi pwedeng i-share kung ano yung formulation it's because it uh, it was patented. Okay, so you you can just approach me if you want to use our technology which is natural. Portion. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga guest speakers. Bago po namin kayo tuluyang ilet ko, baka gusto nyo pong i-plug yung inyong mga social media pages, accounts, para doon sa mga kababayan natin at mga participant na gusto pa pong magtanong ng personal sa inyo. Let's start with Dr. or Mr. Hersapa, sir. Yes, please like our Facebook, Bambuhay. Okay, our Instagram at Bambuhay PH. Our website at www.bambuhay.com And of course, um, please, uh, to all the attendees here, please purchase our um, bamboo face shield. So ito po siya, yan. Oh, yeah. So promote na ako. Here, th this is the bamboo face shield that we have. So it was no. available in Shopee. And also EMB, thank you EMB. Nag-purchase na yung EMB ng 500 pieces of bamboo face shield for EMB DNR. And um, hopefully you are going to mobilize yung mga ano natin, yung mga product natin. So sabihin natin, there's quietly a difference in terms of price ng mga produkto sa, from the other country na mas mura. It's because what we have here in the Philippines, we have this environmental concern na kailangan nating ano, na, kumbaga na, part ng business model. So please like us in our Facebook and of course, donate 50 pesos. Thank you very much doon sa mga nag-donate. So may mga nag-donate na po, may nag-scan na po doon sa, ano, maraming salamat for our your donation. Let's, can, we can do it together. 1 billion bamboo challenge by 2028. Yun yung target namin na mataning yung 1 billion bamboo. We can do it together if we can work together. Maraming salamat po. Yes, we will work together definitely, Mr. Hersaba. Maraming salamat po. Now, Dr. Palihon, baka may social media accounts kayo or future engagements na gusto niyong i-plug. Okay. Uh, please uh, surf the website, uh, Bamboo Professionals Incorporated. We are uh, a group uh, providing uh, services to uh, um, anybody, uh, individual, group, institutions, and uh, uh, as I have mentioned, we have a uh, book, uh, uh, Bamboo, the Grass of Hope. We have written that, and that, that is an outstanding uh, NSTA uh, book. Um, you will be uh, getting a lot of information about Bamboo, of course, because the title uh, would speak uh, to itself. Uh, and uh, uh, you, can, you can contact me uh, to, uh, through my uh, email if you have some... Uh, uh, needs uh, for technical services. Uh, I, I can uh, provide technical services for free uh, depending on who is requesting. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, it, it's really a, uh, I thought uh, I, I will be having a very short time. That's why I, uh, I speak so, so fast, but anyway, uh, it was really a uh, nice experience have, having uh, this webinar and I hope that uh, the next webinar will be uh, uh, another opportunity for, for us, for Mr. Uh, Mark and, uh, and me. Thank you and uh, God bless. Thank you so much, Dr. Palihon and Mr. Hersava. That was indeed a very comprehensive and informative session we had. And again, we are very grateful to have University of the Philippines and Mambuhay as our partners in this webinar. Now, we would also like to thank all our participants that joined us here on Zoom and even on Facebook. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagtutok nyo simula sa umpisa ng ating webinar series noong nakaraang linggo dahil hindi po matutupad at mangyayari ang lahat ng ito kung hindi po dahil sa inyong mga suporta. And to formally end this undertaking, Forest Resources Conservation Division Chief, Forester Maria Teresa Giacchino will give us her closing remarks. Ma'am? 
Thank you, Ms. Ria. Um, good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. On behalf of uh, Assistant Director Eden Westro and Director Lourdes Wangan of the Forest Management Bureau, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all the men and women who joined us today from the Biodiversity Management Bureau, from Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau, from Mines and Geosciences Bureau, Forest Management Bureau, uh, Asset Mars, uh, and other DNR officials and field personnel from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, various people's organizations, mining companies, as well as those who witnessed this webinar through our Facebook live stream. I would like also to thank our admirable resource persons, Dr. Armando Palihon and Mr. Mark Herzaba, who have totally shared their knowledge and expertise on bamboo and its ecological and economic importance. These learnings and insights that you have generously imparted to us, to the participants, to the viewers nationwide, particularly on the use of bamboo in the rehabilitation of mined out areas and in developing community-based bamboo enterprises will help us uh, in our policy formulation and in the implementation of our programs and activities as we, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, is gearing towards the utilization of bamboo under the Enhanced National Breeding Program. Moreover, what we have learned today in this webinar has strengthened our understanding of bamboo and its impact on our communities and the environment. As we come to a close, you may say that the two hours is too short to learn the ABCs or one, two, trees of the restoring mine out areas or even starting a bamboo enterprise. But I hope that every one of us has learned something new and interesting that we can share with others and even apply in our daily lives. Pwede na tayong magtanim, no? Should you need more information, I encourage you to get in touch with our resource speakers. Uh, they binolunter naman po nila yung kanila mga addresses and contact details. Or send queries uh, to us via FMB Facebook page or email us. We, and we will be conveying your queries to our resource persons and even to the FMB management. Baka po meron kaming maitulong sa inyo. With that, I again thank you for um, taking part in this event and for celebrating the Bamboo Month with us. Let us all plant bamboo and keep bamboo strong. Meron kasabihan, ang magtanim ay bibiro. Ito ay mahirap. Pero meron din, kasabi, meron din kasabihan, Kapag may itinanim, may aanihin. Tayo po ay magtanim ng kawayan para tayo ay may pakinabangan sa susunod na mga araw. As Isaiah 55 verse 12 says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Isang makakalikasang araw po sa ating lahat. Thank you so much, Forrester Aquino, for that closing message on behalf of the Forest Management Bureau. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong support sa ating celebration ng World Bamboo Day. We would like to remind everyone that electronic certificates of participation will be given to those who have successfully registered, participated, and evaluated the webinar. That's it for the second episode of the Golden Grass Talk produced by the Forest Management Bureau. Catch again, Mr. Martin Javier, for the last episode of this webinar series on September 30, 11 a.m. as they tackle more about the commercial potential of bamboo that led to its name, the Golden Grass. For more information about the remaining activities this month, wag nyo pong kalimutang bisitahin ang Forest Management Bureau's website, www.forestry.dnr.gov.ph 
pwede nyo rin pong i-like at i-follow sila sa kanilang Facebook page at slash DNRFMB pati sa Instagram account at DNR.FMB. Also, if you want to explore other activities that are happening around the world, please visit www.worldbamboo.net or use the power of the hashtags hashtag World Bamboo Day 2020 and hashtag Kawaya naman. Maraming maraming salamat po. Muli, ako po si Ria Fernandez.